Welcome to Homecoming, a piece from CP Company and Versus that reconnects pro ballers with the football clubs and the communities that made them who they are today. While elite level athletes have turned their childhood dreams into reality, they all took their first steps in grassroots football and were supported by a community, by coaches and by teammates to chase greatness and be their best selves. It takes a village to raise a child and it takes a grassroots club to build a pro baller. My name is Anathiop Neef Ekpadam and today I'm joined by someone whose personal journey very much mirrors my own. From Lewisham to the world, we have Arsenal's very own Eddie and Katie Young. Bro, you good? Yeah, good to see you, bro. You good? Too, man. How you been? Yeah, no, all good. How about you? Yeah, no, all blessed, man. All blessed. But yeah, it feels like a special time to be not just an Arsenal fan, but also playing for Arsenal. What's the what's it like to be in and around at the club at the minute? Yeah, it's good. I think it's a really good environment to be in, to to work, to improve as a player, and to you know push for things. So we've had a great start to the season, and we're hungry to continue doing more. So. No, I think it's a great time to be an Arsenal fan and an Arsenal player. Yeah, you're part of a new generation of, I guess, Halen boys that have come through the academy, like yourself, Saka, Smith Rowe. What does that mean to you to be to be like kind of leading the charge with the club alongside those players you played with? Yeah, it's great. I think um, obviously it's, it's a great sense of pride, you know, coming through the academy, and obviously to do it with obviously other boys like you said, Demille, Bakayo, Reese. Yeah, no, it's great. I think I've played with these guys for a number of years now, so you really feel comfortable with them, obviously, off the pitch and also on the pitch. So, no, it's great. And I think, like I said, we've got a really nice, exciting young project, which we, we've got, and obviously not just the Alien boys, but the other players that have been brought in. So, like I said, I think it's a great time to be part of Arsenal, and you know, I'm looking forward to the future of Arsenal. I've kind of wanted to dial things back a bit, going back to the beginning of your career. I was. I played uh, at Innifielders, yeah. which I believe you did as well. Yes. Um, but whereabouts did you grow up? I grew up in South East London, Deptford. Um, yeah, not too far, obviously, from Honorable Park, where Innifielders is. So, yeah, no, it's just a, obviously a really footballing area. Everyone loves playing football in a cage or whatever. So that was kind of my local club and the club that obviously I knew and a few of my friends have played for. So it just made sense to, to start there. You see, that Lewisham in general, Lewisham's like a, it's like its own country, I feel like. I feel like <laughs> Grove Park, Sydenham, Forest Hill, all these different areas. Yeah. Obviously, you grew up in Deptford. What was Deptford like specifically? Yeah, it was good. I think, obviously, it was all I knew at the time. So I liked it, you know. I think everyone, like I said, everyone loved playing football. Obviously, it's not the most posh area, but mm. kind of instills that hard work and mentality and, you know, always want to strive for more, do better for yourself, for your family. So. I think that was kind of in me from young, obviously growing up. And like I said, obviously a lot of people like football, they see it as a kind of way out. So there's a lot of opportunities to play every day on the cages, on the street, wherever we could. So it was nice growing up. I hear you. I, you mentioned like some people see it as a way out. I guess like before that, when it's more, as you say, like kind of fun, where were you playing? Were you like playing in the house? Or were you playing outside? What was your... I was playing anywhere to be fair, I think. I was playing my street, like we would just use two cars, like parked cars, the, in between as the goals, bins, in between them as goals, cages, anywhere I could really, to be fair, in the house. I think that's how I started, you know, I was playing in the house, I think just kicking too much balls and I probably like broke something. <laughs> my mum was like, get this guy out of here, go take him to a club. So, yeah, now we played anywhere in my school, at school, uh, at the cages in the park, in the street, wherever we could really. I hear you, I hear you. The, your parents are from uh, Ghana, right? Yeah. I always think it's like, um, my parents are from Nigeria and Cameroon. And I think especially growing up in London, it's kind of like, in the house was like kind of like West Africa. Then I go out of the house and then I'm like in London, in the UK, if you know what I mean. Yeah. What was that What was that like for you? Um, I felt like it was, it was okay because a lot of my friends were kind of from similar mm. backgrounds as me as well. So like I didn't really feel too much of a shift, you know, when I left them. Yeah, obviously, growing up as an African, you know, they, they really instill that discipline in you from a young age. But no, nah, grateful I had a good child in my family. My parents worked hard to give me everything. Obviously, I could and give me the opportunity. So nah, it's good. And obviously, my friends live close to me and they're all from similar backgrounds. Obviously, I had differences as well. But nah, we all were like one big family outside of my little family. Got you. How, how important is that discipline being like in not just in your career, but just in life in general? I think it's everything, you know, it's, it's where it all starts from, you know, kind of what what drives you, you know, to wake up every morning and, you know, do well and, 
you know, make sure you commit to something and really give it everything. So now from a young age, my family have always obviously taught me that and made sure I made the right decisions at the right time, you know, because that's where we grew up, you know, a lot of people make the wrong decisions and obviously don't end up as well for them. So now that's been a big part of my life, obviously having that discipline and carries into your footballing career. I, what, what age did you join Healy Fielders at? I believe it was under eight, you know, or under nine. I joined quite late, to be fair. I was just playing in the school. I think, obviously, Sunday League, if you're growing up African, I was a Christian, <laughs> so it clashes with church, you know, the yeah. time. So, <laughs> like, for most of the time, it was just obviously always church on a Sunday, so I couldn't really. And even when I was playing for the club, like, I would come, church would finish at, like, 11.30, kickoff would be at 12, so I would come, like, at kickoff, you know, and yeah. just try and come on, you know, whenever I could, because obviously you couldn't miss church back then. Yeah, no, I definitely had that. Like, I remember we'll be changed, like go to church Sunday morning, drive to wherever the game is, be changing like in the back of the car, <laughs> trying to get ready, and then like just running onto the pitch. Exactly. And they up. couldn't like they, it was so funny because my coach like at the time he just didn't understand that. Like, obviously they take it. Some people take it so serious. Obviously back then, obviously we love playing football, but you know church is an important thing for mm. our family as well. So they just couldn't understand that. Like, see me running like with a shirt on and my shorts on and just trying to get on the pitch as quick as possible, but it's just how we grew up in it. Would you get on the ways even though you uh, were late? You know what, sometimes I'll come just before kickoff and obviously you probably could start me, but I think out of respect for the other players, he probably would put me on the bench and then bring me on if we're losing, but sometimes if there was a big game, even if I came one minute late, like, he would still put me <laughs> in store. So. Were you always playing up front? Yeah, I always played up front, um, up front on the left sometimes, but mainly always up front. Like just naturally, I've always wanted to be close to the goal, getting where the chances are. And yeah, I think I've always just been a striker or attack-minded player. Who, who are you like modeling your game on like back then, um, especially when you started? Um, I wouldn't say I tried to model my game on anyone. I just grew up obviously with idols, I think, back then. Ronaldinho and Thierry Henry were probably the two biggest for me. I think growing up in the cages, everyone just wants to try skills, do stuff. So when you used to watch Ronaldinho on YouTube, just in school, at home, you just want to try and go out there and replicate it. And the same with Thierry. If you're an Arsenal, Arsenal fan growing up like I was, or anyone, you know, you just love him, the number 14, the long socks. So those two are probably my biggest inspirations of all. I hear you. I remember in school people used to try it. Like your school socks only go up to your ankle. People were trying to roll Stretching them up. Them up. Like, like... Yeah, I used to even bring gloves in my bag. Or I used to bring gloves in my bag for for lunchtime to put them on to look like. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I did it summertime. I have gloves. Spring, I have gloves. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Obviously, there's a lot of footballers that come from Lewisham specifically yeah. to Ian Wright, but then to even like Bradley and Sean, um, even to this generation now. Were you aware at the time of? footballers in the area or people who'd come from the area? Not necessarily at that time, you know. It was more, as I grew up, noticing the players around me obviously were doing so well, you know, and going far. I think when you're, when you're young and in your kind of bubble, you only kind of focus on that. And where I'm from anyway, in Deptford, there wasn't many players that grew up and made it to the Premier League or to a high level. So I couldn't really say there was someone that you would be like, oh, He's done it, you know, kind of just focus. So it was more just as time went on and you got more serious, you obviously realised how close you were getting. And then I think the good thing to see now is just seeing players my age or around my age that I might have played with at a youth club, like Millwall Kicks or something, or played with on the street. Like one of my neighbours, Jeremy Ngakia, he's at Watford now, but we literally grew up every day, live like opposite each other. So just seeing stuff like that and seeing each other doing so well at a high level, I think it's amazing to see how much talent is in South London. What does that mean to you, as you say, to have kind of like that community of people that you've grown with um, from literally knee high to now being an adult and playing uh, professionals together? No, it means everything. I think that's, that's what it's about, you know, it's the kind of special moments what make you cherish all the hard work, all the sacrifice you've put in. Yeah, it means a lot. And like I said, obviously, I've known a lot of the guys like Reese, Jaden, I've grown up with, so it's good to see, obviously, them doing so well and that like, kind of just gives you that bond because you've all come from a similar kind of environment, background, and you know how hard they've worked to get there, so you respect it a lot more. I, I, remember, I remember I was in school when um, uh, Ian Wright broke the Arsenal record. Yeah. I remember like the day after everyone is 
everyone's trying to play up front. Everyone's <laughs> lifting their jumper <laughs> over their head, oh, yeah, <laughs> like yeah. they're him. But I remember like the impact like it had like in the area. Like you could even just feel like there was a buzz mm-hmm. about at the time. Um, for you, like having that relationship with him now, like what does that mean? Yeah, no, it's great. I think uh, really when I went on loan to Leeds that season, obviously um, he came up to quite a few of the games, so kind of built a relationship that year, you know, and it was obviously quite prominent that year. So no, it's great. Obviously, he's a he's an Arsenal legend, and you know, growing up from South of South London is well, obviously I knew his story. So no, obviously, it was great to have that kind of obviously advice and just also just liaison with a, a player that's done there, been there, done it, come through the journey that you're you're going through. So I just always try to get tips, whether it be from him or someone else or anyone I can, you know, learn off, because I think that's really important. Hey, someone like him, he obviously played like grassroots level for like quite a long period of time. But even the period you spent in grassroots, is there anything you learned from those those years that you've kind of taken with you that you still carry with you on the pitch now or even as a man? Yeah, I would probably just say the the enjoyment phase of it. Obviously, I was there for maybe a season, not too long. Obviously, I got scouted at the end of that year. But just that year is probably the most enjoyable football I've had. Just playing with a smile on your face, you know, just enjoying expressing yourself. I'd say that's that's what grassroots football is about, you know. I think um, some of my friends play sometimes on a Sunday, so like if I have a day off or something, I'll go and watch it, you know, it's just, it's good to see, man, that level of banner, that kind of enjoyment, you know, I think that's probably the the big difference, the fact that they, you can see everyone enjoying themselves, playing a bit more relaxed and free, obviously, so I say that's what I try to, obviously, as much as I can, I know it's so important and there's a lot on the line, just try to keep that enjoyment side of to the game, you know, and just try to express myself. I kind of like, it's like the, almost the balance of pressure, I guess, like, you obviously, pressure is a thing, in life and in football, I imagine. But yeah. You still want to have that element of not being consumed by it almost. Exactly, I think that's that's the balance. And obviously the best players get that get that right almost all the time, you know. So it's just balancing that, obviously, and putting yourself in the right mental frame, obviously, to express yourself, but obviously be as focused as possible to obviously get the job done. I read there that you still sometimes like send messages back to Haley Fielders at the start of their at the start of their seasons and stuff like that. Why was that like something important for you to do? Yeah, because it just it just means a lot to me. The club, obviously, it being my grassroots football, it's always stuck with me. So um, obviously, not now I haven't had the time, but before in the past, I've obviously gone to see a couple of the games, and yeah, I stay in touch with the people at the at the club, obviously organising help. So if there's anything I can do, obviously to send some love and help, I always try to. So I think it's just important me as a person. I'm a kind of person that never forgets where they come from. So whether that be my family, my area or my team, just staying in contact and keeping that kind of relationship because obviously they're a big part of my story. As you got into like teen years, were you still playing? Obviously, I know you went to Chelsea and then to Arsenal, but were you still playing in like summers and stuff? You were like goals, pits, any yeah, of those kind of things? all the time. Goals, pits, uh, middle kicks. <laughs> just anywhere we can to get extra football, to be fair, I think. All our friends, all of us would, that's how we know obviously all the local players or the boys that are doing well now. It's all through playing in those kind of environments against each other. So you kind of just get to see them obviously grow and to see obviously them competing back then and play against some of them now in the Premier League and at the highest level, it's amazing to see. Is there anything like, uh, when I think to back to them, like playing in those kind of places, it's like, A, like the intensity of it, but also it's like the, almost like the fitness side of it because you're just playing get there 12, leave six, or get there one, Yeah, leave you're seven. playing crazy hours, man. We'll play till it gets dark, really, and they kick us off the pitch, innit? So, yeah, no, it's, it's intense. Pride as well, man. I say, like, growing up in South London, that's a big thing, like, pride, not letting someone beat you, not letting someone not make you or take the piss. So, and obviously you wanted to do that and get one up on something. So, I say, yeah, a lot of players in South London are really proud for what I can say myself, and that's stuck with me, you know. I, re- I think it's like, I remember the first time I think I went Catford Pitts, I must have got like shoulder barged <laughs> off, off the ball and like dropped. And I, I don't think for the rest of that week, I did not live it down. I mean, in, my, in my head, I was like, I've got to get that. I call like, in the corners yeah. and them Catford Pitts, those gritty corners, man, those 50-50s, are, they're not nice, man, at all. Those corner balls. But I think that like kind of football is something like you almost like inherit in a way. I think my 
earliest mem- memories of supporting or watching football was my holy it was my holy communion on like church in Lewisham High Street and the same day it was Arsenal Liverpool FA Cup final yeah. and then like I remember my dad and my uncles were like we need to go I'm like it's our holy, holy communion he's like trying to rush us home everyone's sitting in the front room watching that uh, that final is there any like standout memories you have like your early football uh, I'll probably say getting my first my first like Arsenal shirt the burgundy like O T one. I remember that having that one. That was probably my my first really footballing memory. I'd gone to a couple of games, I think, with my school. Obviously me or my or my local clubs so sometimes our school would give out like free tickets to us who were doing well to, to go and watch. So I remember going to watch a game. That game was obviously probably my first proper game and then from then just going to watch Arsenal as much as possible really. And obviously Chelsea when you're in the academy you get tickets and ball boys, so what were some of those early Arsenal games? Can you remember? I can't remember the obviously exact games, but it was a lot of them. Obviously, when they moved into the Emirates Stadium, obviously I was old enough to go, so just going as much as possible there. You know, obviously watching them and just falling in love, obviously with the team. In terms of talking about, uh, I guess, football and fashion specifically, I think uh, I think it's a lot's changed now, especially over the past like 10, 15 years, and like the link between football and fashion. I think back in the day, like you wouldn't see that many ballers, yeah, yeah, like that. Yeah, didn't have much sauce, I would say, <laughs> if I put it politely. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But there was a couple of people that I think would cut through and do their thing. Mm. Was there anyone you would look at back then and be like, okay? Um, not really as a footballer, you know, that mm. I would say that really caught my eye in the fashion sense, to be fair. I think now, like you said, nowadays there's obviously a lot better fashion, a lot of people obviously more expressing themselves and showing their, obviously, drip a bit more. So I don't really say in the footballing industry there was someone I could pinpoint back in the day that I used to look to for fashion. No. So, yeah, we're here with CP Company today, of course. What does it mean for you to see a brand like CP Company um, getting involved in football and giving a platform for you to be able to express yourself? Yeah, I think it's really good. I think, first of all, what they're doing, the work that they're doing is is amazing. And like I said, I feel like it gives more opportunity for players to express themselves, you know, have that kind of support and backing from obviously a great company like CP. And yeah, I think it's it's a great time, obviously, for young players to to express themselves and, you know, be comfortable and really dibble into things that they might obviously have an interest in, you know. You mentioned that that expression, how important is the self-expression side for you personally? Yeah, I think it's important. I'm a person that just likes to be myself, so I wear whatever I feel comfortable in, what I like, and obviously I try to post, obviously, when when appropriate. Obviously, if I've taken a nice picture or a nice outfit, I'll I'll post. Yeah, and I think it's important, obviously, just to be yourself and feel free, you know, I think. This goes from your obviously on the pitch and obviously off the pitch. So, yeah, I'm that type of person that just likes to express myself. And uh, like I said, I wear what I'm comfortable and I think that's how fashion should be. Is there ever like a connection between, say, how things are going off the pitch? If you're feeling free off the pitch and confident off the pitch, does that kind of bleed over into how you perform on the pitch? Um, yeah, I guess so. I feel like if obviously you're happy off the pitch, it puts you in a good, obviously, mental frame before the game. but. Um, in terms of obviously the fashion of the pitch, yeah, I think I dress the same whether I'm doing well or doing not well, to be fair, but probably just might see it less. It feels like um, over the past few years, like football seems a more welcoming space anyway for people who want to express themselves. I think there's a couple of footballers you see who are like, yeah, very confident in how they put their stuff together. Uh, have you noticed that change from being within football? Yeah, definitely. I think um, there's a lot of players that have obviously actively tried to obviously push that forward. I'll say like, obviously through the team, Hector Bellerin, when he was here, he was one that was really big obviously on fashion and just expressing yourself and not being afraid to kind of like push that out. So I'd say we've got to really shout out to guys like that who really put themselves forward and really push it out there, you know, to be able to allow everyone to feel kind of comfortable and, you know, doing it regularly and not really caring about the the reception or what they might obviously receive back. Is that a thing for some, especially young people, like going into into football clubs? And I guess any walks of life, but do you notice it where some people may feel like a bit, they don't feel like they can fully be themselves yet or don't have the confidence to be themselves yet? Yeah, definitely. I think 
in most places in life, obviously, it's like that. I think um, some environments, obviously, football as well, it's not really the most welcoming environment for people to obviously do ex exactly what they want, obviously, because it's a very restrictive and obviously structured system. So, yeah, I feel like that is kind of like breaking free a bit more now and players are, like you said, taking that more extra step to kind of actively break that open. So, now I'd say right now, especially in the team and the environment I'm in right now, I feel like a lot of the players feel comfortable to be themselves, just how they want, you know, behave how they want, obviously, as is appropriate. And yeah, I feel like it's a really good, good space what we're in right now. Is there anyone in the dressing room who you think, A, like, good or, or on the other side, it's a bit of a howler? Well, in terms of fashion? <laughs> yeah, yeah. A, good. Um, there's a few, to be fair. Reese on his day is good. Um, Mill Smith Rowe is doing well myself. Um, B, well, that's, I'll probably have to say Mo on any man. His <laughs> gear is horrible, man, but you know, he's a nice guy, so. <laughs> I don't really think he's trying to compete in a fashion competition, so I'll have to give it to him, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> you give him the pass because he's a nice guy. <laughs> he's a nice guy, but that's all that matters. He's wearing what he feels comfortable with. It. <laughs> Is there um, any advice you would give to, to young people, A, who are, they might be playing grassroots football, they might be playing Premier League football, um, they might be in any, any walk of life, but uh, I guess trying to find the confidence to impose themselves on the world in a way that they feel comfortable, would you have any advice? Yeah, my advice would just be, obviously, be happy, you know, be free, be grateful, obviously, for where you are, no matter where it is at the moment, you know, I think, you know, we could be in such worse positions, so we always got to be grateful to God, obviously, for where we are, you know, and just, my most um, important message would probably just be focus on yourself, you know, focus on your own journey, don't try and compare yourself to other people or look at other people's, Know how things are going in their life because you never really know, you know. So, I say whether that is grassroots football or playing in the Premier League or another job, you know, just focus on your own journey and you know, work hard and you never know where it can take you. No, most definitely. Uh, we obviously spoke a lot about the past, but in terms of like the future, have you got any like what's next for you? Have you got any goals that you've set yourself on the horizon? Uh, just to keep progressing, keep improving as a player on and off the pitch and. Yeah, just help my team. I want to win things with my team, you know. I want to help be important, you know, to achieve those things. So I say those are my real targets, just winning and improving as a player. Well, yeah, it's been a great chat. Thank you for joining us. No bro. This has been Homecoming with Versus and CP Company. Catch you next time. Mm -hmm.